Um, I don't imagine it's often the blow that Fulham scored another six goals on Tuesday. But just first of all, how do you reflect on, on the week and what's been the main focus going into a, a big game with Cardiff on Saturday? Yeah, focusing very much on, on this weekend because, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think last week's game is very easy to, to uh, put into context. Um, we didn't defend well enough in our own box, but we were um, clinically put to bed, so to, so to speak, by a very efficient and very yeah, high quality team. So, um, but there were some elements of our performance which were very, very good. That's the, that's the anomaly of it. But uh, anyway, you have to move on. Yeah, two fantastic goals from Antoine, who we discussed after the game on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, do you see a preferred position for Antoine moving forward? Because he's versatile, he can play as an attacking player out wide, he can play down the middle. And more importantly, how do you get goals like that out of him on a more consistent basis? Well, you've got to remember he's a young lad, so he's, he's still developing his game. But um, he's, he's really come on a lot in the last yeah uh, six months or so in terms of his game understanding and and um, I mean he's always had the the pace and power uh, so yeah he's a he's proving to be a a good learner and I think that's very very important and he understands uh, what he has so um, in terms of well he's playing through the middle so I think that speaks for himself for itself really I think for the supporters, one of the highlights of the season was winning at Cardiff back mm. in, in August. I think this Saturday could be your biggest home crowd of the season. Yeah, is, it will be so far. Is there an far. extra emotion to a derby match like this for the players? Or is it just another three points at stake? I wouldn't, I wouldn't dismiss it as being just another three points at stake. It is three points at stake. We, you know that, I know that. Um, we have to recognise how important it is when you play derbies. Uh, but the bottom line is you've still got to be able to perform. And to be able to perform, you've got to have a control over the emotional side of the game. So that doesn't, you know, whether that's a, a big game uh, in, in, in any context. So whether it's a last game of the season to win something, to avoid relegation, whether it's a, a derby, a cup final, whatever it is, um, if two teams are evenly matched in terms of their ability, then it's normally the, the, the team that can handle the occasion, the best that comes out on top. So those things still remain the same. That's not to say that you dismiss the importance of uh, what games mean to, to the fan base, because clearly we've, we've already sold 20,000 20, for this game already. So that in itself suggests that this is a big game for both sets of supporters. So you can never dismiss that, of course not. It'd be a great atmosphere, no. it should be a really good atmosphere. Yeah, it always is against Cardiff, mm. man. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to it. Um, Cardiff, I think I've only played five games since the start of December. Um, how, how do you assess them as an opposition this weekend? Well, I mean, look, they'll still have the same threats in terms of, uh, yeah, they're, they're dangerous from set plays. Um, they have some physical players. They have started to uh, play out a bit more. Um, whether that turns out to be the case on the day, we'll have to wait and see. But um, the most important thing for us at the moment is trying to get the level of our own performance more consistently at a high level. Because when we do that, we're, we're you know we can be a really tough side to play against so that's our challenge um, and if we play well and win great but if we win it's great too so I'm not really uh, it's 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 a results are the most important thing of course but um, we're going to have to be able to manage the occasion as well and that's that's what I that's what I expect us to do well in terms of team news, anyone available this weekend or are there any injuries to report? Um, we'll be very similar to, to, to last week, really, yeah. Um, Tyreek's been linked with a, a move to Ipswich on loan. Is there any truth in, in those reports? Yeah, yeah. So we expect that to be finalised before the weekend? 
I, I don't know where we're at with it, but um, as far as I'm concerned, I've said it before, if players don't want to be here, they can go. So I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. You know, he's a player who, uh, unfortunately, um, just wants to play on his own terms. It's not, it's not something I particularly want, so he can go. So that's very much been your mantra, has it not? Um, players need to be on, on board or you don't, you don't mind if players don't want to, to, to do that? And, and no, I do mind very case, much. No, I do mind very much. But they'll leave if that's I meant, what I meant though. That's, if that's the case, then you're happy for them to leave. Yeah, I don't want players who don't want to be here. And if he does depart, would that free up maybe a, a bit of the wages, for example, to bring players in? As you not really. He's, no, he's not really a high earner. That's not really the... No, that's not a... That's not... Uh, something that's particularly high on the agenda with this one, no, no. And um, all the City fans will wish Nathan the very best. I know yeah, he he's in today there. actually, he's been around today, so um, he was in the team meeting with us uh, half an hour ago. Good to see him back. Um, I think the, his teammates have missed him and uh, he's missed being around um, his teammates too, so it's really good to have him back in the building um, and uh, yeah we'll just see how that progresses but uh, as I pointed out the other day it's unlikely that we'll see him this season um, and beyond that I can't really give you any more details um, but it's just good to get him back here at the, uh, at the training ground yeah good to have him around the place. Yeah because I've, I've interviewed him on and off since he first joined the club I think in 2016 but um his mental toughness, he's got the character, hasn't he, to bounce back from what, what is obviously a big disappointment not being able to play football for you on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. No, he, he's, he's, he's a, I said before, he's a bit of a gentle giant. He's a, he's a really, <laughs> I like the way he plays, I really do. He's got an he's got a, um, unbelievable um, amount of bravery. He's a good player. He's a really likeable man as well, so... Yeah, we'll see what the future holds. And you're rightly managing Joe, but um, is he still on course to at least be in the squad for the weekend? Joe, yeah, there's a really good chance he'll be included in the squad for the weekend, so you may see him on the bench. You may. Okay. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Thank yeah, you, cheers, Nigel. thank you. Hi, Nigel. Hello there. I was listening to your interview in the week with, with Jeff and BBC Sounds. Um, right. And, 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 and you mentioned that the, the loan system is not as straightforward as people think it is. Can you, can no. you kind of elaborate, elaborate on that? What, why is that the case? Because it can be very expensive. You is, know, is we're, just, we're, not, that... we're not in a position to pay loan fees or pay um, big wages for players who are improving. So it's, you know, I, I think there is this concept that um, it's just easy to go out and get loan players it's not it's not the case um, I can't guarantee people are going to be I don't guarantee anybody's going to play here even when I sign them you know so <laughs> I'm, I certainly can't do that with other people's uh, players too and uh, yeah so that's it, that's how it is yeah it, the, the January window is notoriously difficult to sign players anyway. Does this one in particular pose more challenges than usual? No, not really. Uh, no, not really. I mean, the, 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 if you allude, are you alluding to our financial situation there? Yeah, and that and the fact that clubs in particular are all kind of in a similar position, financial position at the moment. Are they... Are they well, they are the and they're not. That, that, that's, I think everybody's had a cash flow problem. Um, whether people have uh, the same level of debt uh, is is something that is again that's debatable. But I I I, I don't tend to spend a lot of time um, talking too much about other clubs. All I can do is all I can do is really try and give you perspectives based on what it means for us in our own circumstances. So that's your role to to. To compare club to club, not mine. Um, I work for the football club, so I'm not, you know, whether people think I'm a maverick or not, I'm certainly not a maverick in terms of how I look at how we work and how we work our way through this 
situation that we find ourselves in. So any decision that we make in terms of bringing people into the football club will be dependent on, on whether it's a, a short-term, medium or long-term um, addition. And clearly the cost is going to be a... Uh, uh, a huge element for us at the moment. We, there's no. I'm not trying to do anything other than just say it as it is. It's 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 not easy. Um, it's not stopping us from exploring different avenues. But in terms of um, publicly saying what they are, I won't do that until uh, deals are done. Because you might, be, I might be talking about, we might be talking about somebody else's players, and that's not something I'm interested in doing. Is, is it a case of remaining? patient maybe up until like the last day of the window to get the best deals possible for... uh no i'm not a subscriber to that to be honest with you i mean I, I i i think i understand where you're coming from with the question and that is that it's a bit of brinkmanship um the january window actually if you if if you're looking for best value and biggest impact if you can do it early early the better we've just not been in a position to do business and that's the bottom line um so uh, but as i have pointed out before i'd rather run with the players that we have rather than have people who don't want to be here or uh, just get added numbers in for numbers sake um it would be good to get uh, a player in two players in maybe but we'll have to wait and see. So it, it, it could be that um, something happens later in this window, but I'm not, I'm not promising one way or the other, okay? I know that sounds a bit cagey, but you know, I, I, I can't say it any other way, to be honest with you. It's, I would be like this if the, if the financial position was different. I don't, I don't sort of broadcast, um, broadcast business before it's done, I don't think it's particularly professional. You, you, you mentioned that work is being done behind the scenes. No, with, yeah. yeah. With, with, is there a position that the priority to sign a player in? You mentioned with, with the like, well, clearly at the moment we're, we're we're short on we're short in defensive positions. You know, just with, I was going to, I was going to ask with Bakenson now leaving for Ipswich. Does that change the the focus at all? Of, of the position well, it, I mean, it it only happened last night so no so I, mean, I mean I mean hopefully Matty James will be back and, and uh, uh, relatively soon and, and Joe Williams is is back so yeah and, and uh, that's not like that's that. not as a higher priority as as other areas now um, and look even you know we we talked about uh, and and I think the hot topic amongst our fan base would be in the strike position, but that's that's not imminent. No, no. I, I, I know you mentioned that the atmosphere uh, this weekend. It's a bit of a cliche, but <laughs> uh, is is it a game where the fans can be the twelfth man and make a difference to to the performance? They have been. They have been this season. You know, you think about games like Stoke when we won one nil, where actually Tyreek scored on that night and played okay. To be fair to him. Um, and we had nine minutes of added time at the end of the game. I mean, they helped. They, they saw us over the line. They they got really very much behind the team, and they have been behind the team. Um, uh, you know, at home with with, I think our performances of the players have at least uh, they've shown quite a lot of commitment and and some real ability at times at home recently. Um, Results haven't always gone our way. It's 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 what it is. But our fans have stayed very much behind the team, and I think that's that's something that we that we acknowledge and we're very very grateful for too. So, yeah, it will be a good atmosphere at the weekend. But we need to ignite our fan base. Thanks for your time. Man. Yeah, pleasure. Hey, Nigel. Um, is it is it disappointing with Tyreek? That, that you've spoken to him, he doesn't want to be, he's a player, you've invested a lot of time, you, you put a lot of trust in him, um, <laughs> I think he's just fallen down the stairs by the sounds of it. <laughs> um, is it, I mean, what's your kind of reaction to it? I think I've just said it, I'm not bothered. They don't want to be here, let them go. 
I, I couldn't. I'm not wasting energy on 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 negativity. I don't. I don't invest time in that. And uh, I'm not just saying it. If you ask people who work with me, they'll tell you exactly the same thing. I don't. I don't waste energy on negativity. It drives me mad because it's um, it, it's. Uh, I want people who want to. Uh, you know, if people aren't in the side, I want them to work hard to get there. I, I want people who are in the side to work hard to stay there. You know, I don't want people when they go and get stuff, they want to go somewhere else. I'm not interested. Just, just to clarify, was it an Adam Nudge type situation where he's he's spoken to you and said no. this? No, no, no. Sensed? No, no, it wasn't. Adam was okay. Adam. Adam was no Adam. No, I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to say that with Adam. Adam, Adam was uh, Adam's situation was very very different. So no, it wasn't the same. Okay, um, and then that, that that will leave you with four senior mm. defensive defensive midfield. Is, is that enough to see the season out? Okay, so you included Alex Scott in there. Well, well, there you go, you see. So, so you know, when Adam Scott plays at right wing back, everybody's saying it was best position, centre of midfield or number 10. or And then, and then uh, what's Tyree? 22, 23? But Alex Scott's already a more accomplished player. So, so um, I, yeah, I, I, I don't try and argue. I don't try and fit the facts to... to uh, fit circumstances. So as far as I'm concerned, the very fact that I'm prepared to say, yeah, just let the deal go ahead because actually um, people around the place who sap energy out of other people is is not as valuable as having people who want to be here and play. So, so that's not to say that we, you know, if, if we do find a different solution or something uh, comes up in the next days where Hey, he's not even. I don't know whether it's even completed yet. So he could be back here yet. So who knows? But I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. Just on on Alex, as you mentioned, Alex. Mm. There, um, do, you, do you see him as playing it, playing it, playing a deeper role, almost as he does? I think for England, for England youth level, he plays almost as a number eight. You, can it, could, Fulham, he was he was tending to come a bit deeper in the second half. Is that something? Well, he did, that's where he played. That's why. That's yeah. why he came deeper because <laughs> because he played there. So. Um, the very fact that for somebody of his, uh, I suppose, inexperience in terms of appearances, but he's already he's played at, uh, on the right wing, didn't, yeah, on that day, didn't work for him. He's played at right wing back very well, especially at home. Away from home, been a bit more difficult. Um, uh, he's played in the 10 position. It, you know, he drops into a, a deeper midfield role. He's... He's a bright footballer and he's got the, not just the technical ability, but he's got the awareness to play in different places. And the, I think this is where it's, this is, a, this is the key factor to it. He's adaptable because he understands that the team needs something uh, rather than it's just about him. It's not about him. He's a, he's a bright footballer who's capable of playing in different positions. Yeah, we recognise that in certain positions he's he's better, but but actually, uh, in terms of his football education, the fact that we've asked him to play in different roles and he's been able to deliver in all of those roles really um, is testament to his ability and and mental approach to to those tasks that he's given. I, and I think that is a that is a sign of a really good player, intelligent player, um, and as importantly, a really good character. So it's almost sort of a leadership type attribute in a way, without being overtly vocal or anything like that. In terms of exactly, this is an example. There, yeah, I mean, look, there, there, there are there are diff you know there are different forms of leadership, there are different styles of leadership. Uh, the ones that are very easy rec or easily recognisable. There are others that are, as you say, more covert. They're more uh, subtle. Um, I would imagine for all the youngsters in our academy, um, people like Alex Scott, Eamon, um, 
Zach Viner, people like that, are, are inspirational in the sense that they that there is a potential to to make the transition from the academy into the first team. Um, that sounds a little bit, uh, you know, I don't want to overplay that, but actually circumstances can play, can play quite a, a big role in that too. Um, and I recognise that. But look, if they're good enough, I don't care how old they are or how young they are. So, you know, when people talk about age, uh, I think we do get rather narrow-minded about that. Um, I th- statistically, I think it's something like if you've not broken into the first team and hold down a you know, first team role by the time that you're 19 or 20, you're probably not going to make it. You know, the, 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 um, the question of late developers, yeah, there will still be late developers, but because of the way that the games develop with academies, it, it, uh, it, it's moved in a different direction. I still think there are going to be lots of players out in the non-league scene which um, can make that transition to the, uh, to the leagues again still, so it may change, but um, no, when you, when you see young players who are, who, are ju- who are technically able, but they show the football intelligence too, um, then I think it's really important to try and shape their careers in a positive way. Just on Matty James, you said oh, I'm sorry, who? things are the same as last. Sorry, Nigel. On Matty James, you yeah, Matty, yeah, the same. yeah. Is is he is he in contention for the weekend? He wants to be, but he probably won't be. You know, Matty's okay. really he's <laughs> he's uh, he has a bit of a problem with the bottom of his foot, which is uh, it's taking a while to sort of um, heal in the way that. He needs to for it to for him to have longevity through it. So he's very keen to to get back and we're sort of having to hold him back a bit for that. Not just for his own good but for our good as well. Because I think it's important that we that you know, we we don't want to lose him for a sustained period of time. So I think the very fact that Joe Williams maybe comes back into the equation this week in some format um is beneficial for us and I think that takes a little bit of heat off Matty too um, I know people have, you know I've been asked a question already about will Tyreek go in but Tyreek's going so you know um, playing a player who's questions whether he wants to be here um, no not really don't want to do it I'd rather play a player out of position right, thank, thanks your time. yeah no problem and I, Jim, I just wanted to, uh, with Bakes now back in, yeah. the, uh, back in the training ground, yeah. not going to play this season. Um, would you look at him perhaps as a coaching role or someone around the around the place? Because you've spoken of the importance of the likes of Andy King being injured, but being around the the group to help. Them. No, no, I don't. I, I, I don't think we're in. No, we're we're not in that sort of a position. What we're in a position to do with uh, Nathan really is to give him some support at the moment, not to put um, added. Uh, pressure on him in different areas. He's he's having to cope with a situation which is quite difficult, and that is um, the the type of injury he's sustained on two occasions, and he's had others uh, as well during his career. They put a real question mark um, over over his fitness, and we've got to make sure that we protect him as much as anything. It's just to get him back in around his teammates. Um, and give him some sort of routine again, which I think is important for him. So, um, the, look with with Nathan, we'll, there'll be continued um, assessments, and he'll have, um, yeah, he'll continue to see his consultant, and it will be discussed with, yeah, uh, in 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 the medical terms. But I think we, as much as anything, need him time to evaluate how he feels as well. And that's the most important thing. So really it's just to get him back in here and, and feel a part of, of the squad because one of the most difficult things when you, when you have an injury that's either long-term or complicated is 
you know, there, there, there can be a feeling of exclusion, and we certainly don't want to do that. He's a he's a very, you know, he's an important part of our squad, and he's a very likable man too. So, I think it's just very much on a on a <laughs> on a uh, a level that we want to take care of. And uh, you say about keeping players together in the squad. One player you hadn't played for a while, but is now back in the first team fold is Jada Silva. How have you made of him um, implementing him stuff? Like well, himself? Jay's been Jay's been fine. Honestly, he he he's trained well. He uh, he was a bit unfortunate to be taken off at the weekend, but I just felt we needed more physical presence. Um, he continues to train well. He's been fine, um, so no problems there. Thanks, Nigel. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Nigel. Just a couple of quick ones from me. Um, I mean, you talked at the beginning about the consistency at that high mm. level being kind of the biggest issue for the squad at the moment. I mean, yeah. you haven't, haven't been able to back up a victory with another victory mm. so far this season. Is that something that's a concern to you? And it's about how much? Uh, concern. Look, it, it's something that you like doing. I mean, that uh, that's, <laughs> that's probably... Um, and it gives you a more re- realistic chance of making progress in what is traditionally and it's turning out to be a you know the 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 championship in terms of a making positive progress is always quite difficult because you'll see a result every week which will surprise you or you know it's it's a tough league to to be successful in um and so it goes without saying that back-to-back wins can be very very um yeah, I mean, they, they can make a big difference to how how things look and feel as much as anything. So uh, this weekend, first and foremost, we need to get back to winning ways. Um, it will be a tough game because it's a derby and, um, yeah, we have respect for our opponents too. So first thing is we're going to get that first win. And then, and then yeah, it, back-to-back wins can give you a real boost psychologically as well as the... Uh, the benefits of actually making progress in the league table. So, does it concern me? Uh, yeah, I suppose it, it. It's frustrating as much as anything. Um, I wouldn't necessarily use the word concern. I'd say frustrating sometimes that we that we uh, can't um, take advantage of good performances. Um, we've certainly lost. A number of points this year from winning positions which have been very very frustrating um, we've not drawn enough games I mean that's something where you know we've uh, the, the wins have been hard to come by but we've but we've lost too many games that we've had a, a chance of getting something out of too so they're all signs of a uh, yeah of inconsistency and that's something that we uh, that we are trying to address and just lastly, on Cardiff this weekend, I mean, yeah. they're a team on a difficult run at the results at the moment. Does that make them more of a threat at all? And if so, how much? I think just because of the nature of, we've already talked about it being a derby, I think in many ways it's like a cup game. You know, these games become, uh, uh, you look at form, you look at how teams play, and there will be some differences to, to how things have been in the last few weeks. Uh, it will be very, very competitive. I know that, absolutely. And I think that's the most important thing. We need to be able to deal with the competitiveness of the game, but we need to have calm heads to be able to to function and perform under pressure. And that's what it's about. That's what big games are always about. Um, but I've said many times before, good players play well in big games and good players play in games where people don't there, think they're quite so big because they're good players and good players can can um, reproduce their best form in any circumstances because they can detach themselves from the emotional side of it and that doesn't mean to say they don't care it means to say that they are able to understand what it takes themselves to get into a state of performance and that's the art of that's why that's why the top players in any sport in the world are the top players in the world they, they may have the they may have uh, superior um, superior technique in some instances, but a lot of it as well, or the, the added factor is their ability to perform under pressure because they're, 
yeah, because they're mentally tough, mentally strong. Thanks very much for your time. Yeah, okay, thank you. We're done? We're done, I believe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Nigel.